What I'm going to talk a little about today is joints, right? Articulation, that is where two bones are joining together. And so I kind of went over a little bit when we talked about the cranium and the facial bones, these fibrous joints, these sutures that join two bones together, but there's a couple of other types, right? Mostly when you're thinking of joints, you're thinking of what are called synovial joints that are connected by these joint cavities, right? These two types don't have joint cavities, so they're either fibrous joints or cartilaginous joints. And what I talked about before was the fibrous joint that are connecting the two flat bones, the flat bones together of the skull. And as we, if we get to these, I'll talk about them. I talk a little bit about these in the video. But those fibrous joints, by the time you're an adult right now in your head, they're fused together. They're pretty much have been ossified, right? But when you're a fetus and an infant and a, a young child, right? You're still a young, really baby before five. Um, those connections between the two bones, here's your frontal bone and your parietal bone, and you actually have two halves of your frontal bone at this point. Uh, they haven't fully grown out. Your brain is still growing. So in between, you have the dense connective tissue. It's kind of like a really strong tendon in between them that'll fuse together later. So this fibrous area right here is called an anter the anterior fontanelle in this case. That's that soft spot on the baby's head. So those are fibrous joints. Um, and then for the cartilaginous joints, I don't really care about the hyaline uh, cartilage ones, um, but I want to talk a little bit about these fibrocartilage ones, right? So for these fibrocartilage joints, these are called symphysis joints, and these are connecting two bones together um, where you're going to want to allow a little bit of movement in between those bones, but not too much, right? It's really two places where you could have a bony connection, uh, but you don't because you want a little movement or maybe cushioning in between them right here. All right, so this is your pubic symphysis. And here, right, it's forming in the pubic area of your two hip bones on the anterior surface connecting the two. And it allows a little bit of movement um, in between the two sides of your hip. It also loosens up during uh, late pregnancy and labor uh, to allow your uh, the pelvic uh, outlet a little more room for the baby to get out right there. So that's your pubic symphysis. But then the other major one are your intervertebral disc that are going to be in between the bodies of your adjacent vertebrae. So your vertebrae are going to be, again, are going to be connected. They have, you know, the bony end plate here is going to be capped with the hyaline cartilage like most bones. But then you have a, this extra structure called the intervertebral disc, part of it, which is going to be made of fibrocartilage. All right, so here are the bodies of adjacent vertebrae. In between them, instead of joining, joining bone to bone, you got this intervertebral disc right here. All right, just while we're here, your vertebral column is also connected by these other major ligaments, uh, these strap-like ligaments going down the entire column, as well as between the processes right there. But these intervertebral discs are those fibrocartilage ones in between them. And so it's a complicated structure. Um, you have this ring of fibrocartilage surrounding what's called a nucleus pulposus. It's basically kind of a fatty areolar tissue, which is kind of a spongy ball, right? That's going to allow for compression about uh, these, between these two vertebrae right here. So the annulus fibrosus is the surrounding and then the nucleus pulposus is in the middle of that and so what this does is your vertebrae in particular your lumbar vertebrae is basically bearing the weight of your upper body and so it's undergoing a lot of compressional strength and instead of these two bones crushing together you have this little shock pad underneath it which is going to give a little bit under compressive strength, right? And then it's gonna bounce back. Compression is released. There's a little bit of, there's some tension uh, resistance because of all the cartilage, because uh, all the fibrous in that fibrocartilage. So those are intervertebral discs, right? Allowing a little bit of squishing and shock pad right here. The other thing I'll mention about them, that annulus, 
that annulus fibrosis is a little bit thinner on the posterior side right here. And what happens if you have injuries or it starts to degrade your nucleus pulposus can squeeze out the back and start pressing on one of your spinal nerves, right? Particularly in your lower back, because again, this is uh, receiving a lot of the weight of your body right here. It presses out, it stimulates your nerves. So your nerve is getting all these signals. One of them, some of those are pain signals, right? Or maybe numbing. This is why these slip discs or herniated discs are so painful. So those are your intervertebral discs. Those discs, as well as your suture, right? Those are not allowing a whole lot of movement. Your sutures don't allow any movement, whereas your intervertebral discs allow a little bit of movement in between them. When we get to our synovial joints right here, those are highly movable, and some are much more movable than the other. All right, so these ones, hopefully your parietal and your occipital bone aren't moving. These can move a little bit, and your synovial joints are going to be very movable. Right, so you don't usually have problems uh, with your parietal and your occipital bone uh, being displaced. However, your shoulder joint is often injured, right? You often have a lot of injuries in your shoulder joint because the more mobile a joint is, the more unstable it is, right? And so you're gonna see extra structures to kind of deal with that uh, mobility and the lack of stability, right? Starting from your head to your vertebral column, your atlanto-occipital joint, all the way down your vertebrae, there are little synovial joints uh, connected at certain regions on your superior and inferior articulating facets. And then your major joints of your pectoral and pelvic girdles, as well as between your humerus, radial and ulnar joints, and you're forming your elbow joints and your wrist joints, hip joints, your knee joints, and your ankle joints right there. All right, so these are all synovial joints right here. And these are showing them bare, right? The bones are connected to the bare without any kind of covering. But in reality, we're gonna see these coverings, these capsules around the ends of the bones right here, right? So these are the synovial joints that are enclosed by this tough articular capsule, All right? So this joint cavity is the space in between and it's gonna connect the bones with this complex, this fluid filled joint complex. For that joint complex of a synovial joint, there's a couple different elements, which I'm gonna go over individual that make up this synovial joint. All right, so the first thing, this first component, the articular cartilage of each bone. Each bone is capped with this, uh, with, at the end, at the, at the proximal and distal ends with this articular cartilage right here, right? So this, remember this hyaline cartilage is that sort of, that rubbery, watery matrix, which is gonna give a little bit. And then the other thing to know about these is that, again, it's AVAD, there's no blood vessels or nerves going through here. It gets all these chondrocytes. Okay, so here's the chondrocytes and the lacuna. Uh, they get their oxygen and nutrients from the underlying blood vessels over here or the synovial fluid within here, right? And I'm bringing that up um, for an important point right here. Actually, first, let me bring up the point that this articular cartilage, unlike other cartilage, does not have perichondrium on the surface here. That's because you want a nice, smooth, slippery surface here. And that's what this articular cartilage is providing right here. So back to what I was saying about that these cells are getting their oxygen and nutrients from these blood vessels over here or the synovial fluid over here. When you're moving around, and doing sort of normal everyday activity or exercise, your joints are kind of compressing up against each other. And what that's doing is kind of squeezing the fluid, right, inside your hyaline cartilage and out, right? So it's bringing in this synovial fluid, replacing, uh, bringing in oxygenated and nutrient. And then when you relieve that compression, the fluid leaves the hyaline cartilage and goes into the synovial fluid, getting rid of the carbon dioxide 
and metabolic waste right here, right? So when you're moving around a lot, causing, doing these weight-bearing uh, exercises, right? You're supplying your articular cartilage with oxygen and nutrients, right? That's why it's important to do these weight-bearing exercises. Without them, the cells, your chondrocytes within here, uh, they start to become unhealthy, they start to deteriorate, and that's when you start to get the kind of damage of this articular cartilage. That's your articular cartilage lining the ends of your bones right there. And then inside this capsule covering those articular cartilage and around here is you got synovial fluid, right? And as I just mentioned, it's doing that nutrient distribution to the articular cartilage. It's also providing lubrication, right? So again, this hyaline cartilage is super slippery. There's no perichondrium around it. So these are gonna slide against each other when they do rub up against each other, right? So that synovial fluid is providing lubrication nutrient distribution. It's also providing a little bit of shock absorption when you're banging these two together. So that's your synovial fluid that is contained within this capsule over here. So the capsule that's covering this entire cavity right here is called your articular capsule, right? And it's made up of a fibrous layer over here and a synovial membrane. So you have an outer fibrous layer and an inner synovial membrane right here. So those are the two elements of the articular capsule. So let's take a look at that inner layer, the synovial membrane right here. And so this is the one facing this joint cavity over here. And it's made up of an epithelial kind of layer called synovial sites and then loose connective tissue under that, just like any membrane. And so the synoviocytes are the cells that are taken in the body's material that are coming from these blood vessels right over here. They're taking them in, they're getting the oxygen, the nutrients, and then they're secreting it, making it into synovial fluid uh, to be secreted inside the joint cavity, right? So that's how the articular cartilage is getting all its nutrients and oxygen. All right, so... Those are the epithelial lining. That's the loose connective tissue with the blood vessels and nerves, right? And then you have an outer fibrous layer, and that's going to be dense, irregular connective tissue. So one thing to I'll go back to that in a second, but one thing to remember about membranes is because they have all the blood vessels and stuff, that will be your site of inflammation. So if, you, if you've heard of a frozen shoulder, this is known medically as adhesive capsulitis. So this is inflammation of the joint capsule. Right? And so when what happens here is you have some kind of damage or based on some kind of activity, that capsule over here gets inflamed. Uh, you start to get scarring of that joint capsule right here. So you get these adhesions, things start uh, adhering to things that they shouldn't be adhering to and your throat and your shoulder gets frozen right here. So remember the outer joint capsule is this fibrous layer. When we talked about bone that had that periosteum, that outer fibrous layer of the periosteum, which was dense irregular connective tissue, that's gonna fuse in and form the fibrous joint capsule right here, right? So it's continuous with the periosteum from one bone forms this fibrous joint capsule and then is integrated with the periosteum of the next bone. And this is showing a cutaway, but of course it's surrounding your entire bone. Part of it is holding together the articular bones, but it's kind of holding together this whole joint cavity. So that's your outer fibrous layer. And then that's not really enough to hold, for the most part, your bones together. So there's gonna be additional ligaments. Right, remember ligaments are dense, regular connective tissue that are gonna connect bone to bone right here. So you're gonna have your ligaments or your fibrous layer, which is gonna make up the joint capsule, but then you're gonna have extra ligaments around the side right there. All right, so here is your shoulder joint. It's got these named ligaments right here that are really just sort of thickenings of that joint capsule. Some of the ligaments are these capsular ligaments that are gonna be thickening of the outer layer, 
but then you're also going to have named extra and intra capsular ligaments. And so here's a couple examples right here. Your ulnar collateral ligament on the medial side right here and your annular ligament that are going to be connecting your radial and your ulnar bones here. So these are ligaments right over here and we're going to get more into these ligaments here, right? So these though are any any joint, any synovial joint you're going to look at is going to have all these elements.